Young mother Lacey Spears has been searching for answers for her chronically sick five-year-old son, Garnett. Now living in the tight-knit area of Chestnut Ridge, New York, people in the community become suspicious. She told everyone about uh, Garnett, the terrible uh, illnesses he'd had over his life, how he was a failure to thrive child who had all these various diseases and couldn't eat. They take him out to a diner and they'd see him eat, you know, double portions or whatever. And things started not to add up. But Lacey is adamant that something is very wrong with her son's health. And on one afternoon, following symptoms of a high fever, severe headache, and convulsions, Lacey rushes Garnett to the hospital. It's Friday when they check in. The mother complained that he was having seizures. They hooked him up to an EEG. Uh, the first day, there is no seizure. And no seizure activity on Saturday or Sunday. According to the medical staff, five-year-old Garnett is the picture of health. Sunday morning comes. The nurse comes in with some great news for Lacey that Garnett had no seizure activity. He most likely would be going home. Then just moments after the nurses and doctors leave Garnett's hospital room. A young boy who's bouncing in the bed for one moment and within 10 minutes, deathly ill. Lacey gives a play-by-play -play on her Facebook page with this post. Please, please send G some love. Went from fine to really sick in minutes. Then a tragic turn for the worse that no one saw coming. Essentially, the child was brain dead. Again, Lacey takes to Facebook. My sweet baby Garnett has been declared brain dead. It can't even be possible. That's my baby boy. I'm not ready to let him go. Doctors treating Garnett can't find a medical explanation for his current grave condition. Alarmed by the suspicious circumstances, they call the police. The only information that I received from my supervisor was that uh, there was a child that was apparently on life support, and um, there were some unusual circumstances surrounding the case. Blood tests show Garnett has a lethal amount of sodium in his system. But how in the world did it get there? Not naturally, according to doctors. Something was poisoning this kid, and some... somebody was putting it in his system. That's correct. Who did you think that someone was? Well, I mean, obviously, the caregiver is the mother. Right away, Lacey is interviewed by police. No immediate flags. I wanted to hear her story. Her story made sense. At that exact moment, I had no reason not to believe what she was telling me. According to investigators, they had to wonder if this was simply a tragic story of a young mother who has just lost her sick child. Detectives had to consider that maybe the doctors got it wrong. During that same interview with Detective Carfee, Lacey mentions the recent passing of Garnett's father, Blake. Around this same time, Lacey's own father arrives at the hospital. I introduced myself, shook his hand, told him who I was, and I told him that I was very sorry about the passing of Blake, Garnett's father. And he said to me, who's Blake? Daddy Blake. Daddy Blake. Who was not the father who was not the father. Who did not die in a tragic accident. No. Ends up Blake Robinson is alive and well and working as a Morgan County Sheriff's deputy in Alabama. Did he have any idea that Lacey was using pictures of him or someone she claimed to be him, calling him Daddy Blake and she manufactured this entire story? No, not until I called him. Blake tells police he went out on a couple of dates with Lacey nothing serious or sexual. For me, that was the most, the biggest red flag, if you will, about Lacey's truthfulness. Investigators wonder if she lied about Garnett's father, what else might she be lying about? Police obtain a search warrant for Lacey's apartment. When you executed the search warrant at her apartment, what did you find? When we walked in, there was a open setting kind of apartment. In the middle of it was a feeding machine pump with what appeared to me to be breast milk in a feeding bag. And right next to the feeding bag, and there was a small table off to the side. It had all the medications that she had told us. It was like seven, eight medications that she told Detective Carvey that she was currently giving her son. In the middle of those was a sea salt container. Sea salt? Sea salt. 
police photograph the apartment. Then they receive a game-changing phone call. It's shocking information coming from Lacey's neighbor, Valerie Plauchet. Lacey had placed a phone call to her, and the phone call was, can you go to my apartment, take the feeding bag that's on the feeding machine, get rid of it, and don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Correct. Detectives recover the feeding bag in a second bag from the trash. Well, they were submitted to the Westchester County lab for analysis, and uh, an astronomical high level of sodium was found in those bags. Sodium? Correct. And he suffered sodium poisoning? Correct. Police collect 170 items from Lacey's apartment and question her again. What was her demeanor? Uh, she would come into the room crying hysterical, put her head down, and when we talked to her, I, she would just look up there would be no tears. Detectives begin to see a pattern of what they believe to be child abuse in one of the rarest forms. Had you heard of Munchausen's by proxy before this investigation? Truthfully, no. I've heard of caregivers harming children, but the actual term, no. Investigators start to build their case, believing Lacey was poisoning her son and then posting it all over social media to grab attention and sympathy. Though she and her lawyers deny Spears suffers from any mental health disorder, Lacey seems to be the poster child for Munchausen by proxy. But how did she get away with this for so long? If someone were to catch on to her or they would try to investigate her, she knew when it was getting too hot for her to be there, it was time to move. But the buck stops in New York. Now, investigators just need solid proof, more than just tainted feeding bags and a canister of salt. If only cops could catch Lacey red-handed, or perhaps they already have. I didn't know the machine was hooked up to video. Up next, an unbelievable find. It's something that will haunt me. The last few minutes of little Garnett's life, frame by frame. We actually had to watch a video of a five-year-old child being murdered. After medical personnel leave the room, Lacey appears to take Garnett to the bathroom, just outside of camera range. But when they come back into frame... When he came back out of that bathroom, a few seconds, minutes, he turned into the most sick child 